Vegas, what's going on? It's yours truly, you got AD with 98.5 KLUC. We are Las Vegas' number one hit music station. That is a fact. Now, tonight, got a very dope individual uh, in the studio. Now, he's a full-time artist, a singer, rapper, producer. Real quick, though, before I introduce him, uh, I got introduced to this guy. Actually, he introduced himself to me um, via Twitter. There was a tweet, and I'm going to take him back. This is because this is something that made my day, made me feel um, super dope. Um, and... Had to bask in it for a second because that was the first time I ever saw something like that. So so bear with me. But the tweet said, appreciate you making the step to show love to the artists here in Vegas. Your interview's popping on my timeline all the time. This was uh, August 7th of this year. Right. Um, and so Elmer Abapo, without further ado, hey. uh, you can follow him on Instagram at Elmer.Abapo and then Elmer Abapo on Twitter, correct? Right, right. Uh, so you tweeted this to me and I'm like, well, this, I, I, feel, I feel dope. Like this, is, this made me feel really good. So I appreciate that first off. Yeah, yeah. Um, second off, I'm like, I hope this guy is a great artist because it's like, okay, it's like this guy just showed mad love in, in less than two sentences. Um, and I would love to reciprocate the energy, but I hope he's dope because it's going to be difficult if he's not. But right. e either way, I appreciate it. So then, um, of course, I uh, I delve into your material and I'm like, okay, this guy not only raps, uh, not only sings, he also produces. Um, and then we've had conversations before. You're a full-time artist. Yes. Yes. Sir. Um how, how how is that life like are you getting money from music to finance music is it is it difficult is there a struggle involved like, explain being a full-time artist you like you have no other job yeah no i have no other job your only um, source of income is music somewhat i mean okay. like well let me explain it like so and like i kind of like walk through this in my vlog that i have on youtube like i basically like show everything that i'm doing every single week every single day and like it, it's really just about like getting money wherever. My fault. The name of the vlog one more time. Uh, well, I call it uh, "Life of a Full Time Artist" with Elmer Bapo. I'm thinking about changing it, making it something a little bit more catchy. So I think I think it's catchy. It is what it is. Okay. My fault. But, but but go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So I mean, honestly, it's just trying to figure out getting money wherever you can get your money from. So like my main sources of income are, you know, I like. Like I'm a singer, uh, a performer as well. So like I'll play at the casinos or you know restaurants and whatnot, and um, you know the, they'll pay me hourly for my entertaining and like playing covers and whatnot. Another thing that I'll do is um, I'll en audio engineer live okay. at gigs and whatnot, uh, selling beats. You okay. Know, with to your homie, uh, yes. Sav. Yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah. So did, were you guys actually able to link up? By the way. I haven't met him, but, but as like, far as like but, the con but everything went through, like he has some of those beats, so he's gonna be like writing to them and oh, whatnot. Yeah, so, okay, dope. Yeah, yeah. So thanks for that. Man. No, it's all love. Appreciate that. Uh, what else do I do? Um, like primarily, like it's it's doing like these live entertainments because that's I feel like that's where you get like the most kind of like money from, especially okay. like here in Vegas, like it's an entertainment kind of city. But that being said. It's incredibly hard. Right. Incredibly hard. Like I, I left my architecture job thinking like, oh, it's gonna like free up more time. And then <laughs> like I'll be able to like uh, you know, do gigs when people ask me when prior prior to that I couldn't because right. I had like my nine to five, right? But it's, no it's time. yeah, yeah. But it's it's still very hard because um I am not in the position I think some artists are in this city. But I'm not in the position where, like, my reputation is very well known as a performer. So people aren't, like, constantly, constantly reaching out to me. And um, I, you know, I have to hustle for these gigs. Like, I have to, like, text every single one of these restaurants every, like, two weeks or something. Hey, do you have a date that you'd like to have some live music going on? And, um, you know, I, ha I have to stay on it. And uh, as part of it, though, you're selling yourself. Right, right. I and and then so like the other part of it is like you know I'd like to like get to the position where like it's my own original music that uh could be you know burning my living Facts. and whatnot. You will. I'm not there yet. You will be absolutely though. not there yet. I appreciate that, but and then, and that's tough too. Like figuring out like how to like market yourself. You got to do all the graphics. Like you know, just like it's basic business stuff. Like what I kind of realized was that this music thing is just so much more of like a business um than like you than people perceive it to be like you think you could just be in like your room and just like make music all day and people are gonna find you no you have to what, get out there yes absolutely like i learned that like in these like past i don't know what it is like six months like 
I cannot be in my room just making music and expecting like something to happen. Be a sound, so, just a SoundCloud artist. Yeah, yeah. Like it, it definitely is a business. And what I've started to realize is I need to start like mapping my time out like a business instead. Like I need to be getting those leads. I need to constantly be networking and talking yes. to people. And I'm terrible at that. Serious. I am a terrible networker. I mean, like I can talk to people and whatnot, but really, because you're personable, so I, w- I wouldn't, I wouldn't guess that you can, you like you just said, you can have a natural conversation like it's right. nothing. Right. But as far as like selling myself and putting myself out there, that's like a skill like I haven't really like learned. So okay. like I'm actually like reading books and stuff. Okay. So I'm trying right. to like get that up. I but, think if you man. continue to sing the Jodeci freaking you on stage, <laughs> I, I think you'll be just fine because everybody's gonna reciprocate that, especially the ladies. Yeah, um, yeah. Be good to go. Uh, yeah, I think I think yeah, keep, keep doing that. People want to hear you sing. Yeah, yeah. I that, and that's what I intend on doing. Like this um, album that I'm actually like working on. Like I've incorporated like more singing and whatnot because I think that's also like a big differentiator too. Yes. Um, being able to sing and not only rap because there are a lot of people that rap out in the city. It's 2017 though, and every a lot of people now you got to have the melody, you got to rap and have right. the melody. Everybody's doing it. it's great, but you can actually sing. You can do more than a melody. You can actually you actually have vocals. Right, right. Um, so I think that's dope. You you can you don't come from a background where you don't ha- necessarily have to uh, struggle making music, though. Um, you graduated from Bishop Gorman, right? Or you yes. went to Bis- you went to Bishop Gorman? Yeah. And then you graduated from UNLV. Yes. And, the, and what was your degree in? Architecture. Yeah. So like the, the, that, that's 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 a money making field right there. That's like a very lucrative field. I feel like, and right. I'm, I'm sure there's areas you have to work your way up or get here, just like anything. I get it. Um, but you dropped that to pursue your passion, which I think is dope. So you dropped good money over here. I'm assuming. Yes. to to uh be broke not saying you're broke or anything like that but oh, but I, I, but like full disclosure <laughs> i'm pretty broke but to but <laughs> but to struggle and enjoy and, and, and to pursue your passion though right so uh <clears throat> you know you don't you don't have to be here you could be here but you you also at age of 40 i'm assuming you want to be like okay i actually went for it and whether i made it or not i know that i went for it yes so i think that's dope um and I, I think that's worth the struggle at least knowing uh so to go hand in hand with your twitter and your instagram profile uh bio know yourself love yourself give yourself time to grow right. i think there's uh what did jay call this beauty in the struggle yes um so i think uh and I, i'm not not sure how long the struggle has been going on or how long it's going to go on but i think i, I think you're you're seeing a beauty in it and you have a lot of you have a lot of stuff to offer though you uh i appreciate that you know sometimes i doubt myself no you're you know? tripping with that i mean we all have insecurities you can't you i don't care if, if someone says they have no insecurities out of their damn mind we all have some type of insecurity right i have insecurities about the enamel on my teeth like if i could I, <laughs> stuff will stick to my teeth and i'm like crap i didn't know that was on i drink coffee it's so like i don't have any enamel it's like, okay well let me make sure my teeth is good i don't want to be in the camera with boogers right, that's right. an insecurity right there like so we all have them um but no i think i think you're very well put together uh i gotta ask as far as the production side um do you still do you still find yourself wanting to to make music on other people's beats, or do you only want to be on Elmer Abapo production? Um, I mean, I, th- I feel like it's a nice thing to say, but I think with the experience that I've had, just being a full time artist, like sometimes it's just not lucrative and not in your best interest. But it's also it's also like important to like have that brand, right? Okay. So if I do decide to, um, you know, work with somebody else's music, it definitely has to align with the brand. Like I'm not just jumping on whatever. Right? But that also takes money out of your pocket because you got to purchase their beats unless you guys right. have some type of mutual symbiotic relationships. So right. Like, so I get that. Yeah, but I'm I'm very open to it as long as it's something that I truly like, something that I feel like I can truly get on, and I th- I think that's it. I'm I'm beyond the like. I'm not like Russ, where I'm like okay. mixed, mastered, <laughs> produced it. Like that, that's that's not a big thing to me. I, I feel like it used to be, and it, it's a nice thing to say. Like you don't have to do all that, is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, I mean, okay. like if if I can get away with not doing any of that, um, you know, that's better because like what I'm starting to realize is what's more important is your time Facts. and like time efficiency. Yeah, yeah like I, like man, I spend like five hours like making a beat and. Uh, five hours recording, five hours mixing, like a way longer time, like mastering. And if you have like people there to just help you expedite that, I mean, like that's good business. Yes. You know, like you need to learn how to expedite everything. And that's where I I need to, I I just need to learn all that. Do you enjoy the mixing and the mastering and the finishing the product? To a certain point. I, I enjoy it as far as like the creative aspect, as far as like, the math and like, oh, well, mil- this many milliseconds and the, set the that. compressor, blah, 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 all of this. Like, I don't really like doing that. I think like, you know, in the best case scenario, 
I'd have like people that can convey what I'm thinking, but they're like much more proficient at it and they'll be able to do it. I actually have a homie who does that. His name is Brandon Millares. Okay. He's another artist out here. And occasionally like he'll come in and like help me out with that and really like fine tune things. So lucky so you, to have that. So it'd be, it'd be doper to like pass that along to him and then you can manage your time over here doing this more so. Right, right. Okay. It's, it's all time management. That's what I realized just because, man, you got to make you, the best use of your time. Facts. And if you're sitting down, you're not doing anything, it's like, okay, crap, I could be doing something. Right. But you also got to give yourself time to refresh and, and to regroup, I feel like. Absolutely. Um, so it's all a balance, which I haven't found out. And I don't know if anybody has the expert equation to the balance of, uh, of time proficiency. Um, but uh, we, we talk, we've spoken on these videos before. I'm um, just a fan of the records, though. Um, the Wasting No Time mm -hmm. featuring Nico Detour. Yep. Okay. I want to make sure I got it right another first time. I don't think I said you it, got right. it right. Uh, and then you also have the Right Now. Yes. Um, right Now, I love it because it's at the wheel, the wheel, what's the, the wheel of misfortune? Wheel right? of misfortune. Still have yet to get out there. <clears throat> want to get out there, though. You know so, where it is, right? It's in Henderson, right? Or uh, I mean, no? kind of sort of. No, it's like by like. There's like Lake Las Vegas, Okay. the way you get to Lake Las Vegas, and then you drive like five more minutes out along that road, and Minutes. then there's a gas station, and they can direct you to where it is. I read that. I actually read that on Google that day. You had to stop at the gas station. They'll tell you how to get there. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Okay. And without the gas station, you think you can figure it out? Find without it? the gas station, you'd probably be wandering around the desert for a little <laughs> okay. bit. I don't, don't want to be doing that. Yeah. Um. So I so I, I like well, I like the song. I like the visual as well. Um. The Wasting No Time was dope because, you first of all, the song is, is just hella dope, but you actually filmed it in Ikea. Yes, and your girlfriend Nikki shot shot the shot the visual, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I learned this a few months back, but when I first talked to you, I had no idea about it. So I think that's super dope um, that you guys can collab your 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 works together. I don't yeah, know if you want to shoot videos for anybody else, but the fact that you did, so the fact that you but <laughs> but you but you made it and it and it, and it looks super dope. So you know, um, full disclosure, we weren't supposed to be in there either. But I, I mean, I imagine, but you it. know, <laughs> you, what, what's cool about it is those that hit my mind, but. You didn't look uncomfortable at any part of the video. Okay, I'm glad because like I kind of like for the like a little bit I was just like, oh man, like I hope nobody tells me. Yeah, you're in, you're in the back of your head like crap. They're probably watching me over here. Like, <laughs> yeah. what is this person doing? Why is he over here rapping? Like, yeah, yeah. No, but you you look it looked natural as can be. Um, and then I didn't realize that the picture, the actual graphic for the song, wasting no time, was actually with, it was in the kids area, right? Yeah, and you were sitting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm not mad at it. Not mad at it. <laughs> um, I so I, I recently uh, I, I know I'm late. Um, well, first, I haven't checked Pandora's music box. Is that the first project? Uh, it's not my very first project, but it's the... Because, like, my first project was, like, a mixtape. Okay. And then that one was kind of, like... An, it's not on your first, website. Like, the, the only two that are on your website are Pandora's and the... And, yes. Yeah, and the yeah. Legend. Yeah, I, t I took, like, some of that stuff down because I'm just, like... Uh, well, it's, like, some of my older stuff. Like, I want to, like, kind of, like, clean up everything. Okay. But, like... But kind of, like, what we were talking about before, like, maybe, like... I just put everything out again and like show my growth as an artist, you know. Some people made some someone here in 2017 might like a song that you record in 2013, right. and they would have no idea about the song unless it's out there. I'm not saying put it out there if you don't if you're not if you're not approving of it. I had this conversation with Sav all the time. He's got mm. some songs from back in 2012, and I'm like, yo, bring this back out, bro. Right. It's like, no man, that's old. That's four years old. I'm like, they don't know it's four years old. Right. Like, so um, you may have some gems in there that people haven't heard yet. Right. So what was the what were the, what were the was it, well, only one project before Pandora's Music Box. What was? Yeah, I, th I think so. Like other than that, like it what was, was it just called? like releasing uh, Ride to the End mixtape, okay. something okay. like that. But prior to that, it was just like me releasing like covers and stuff like that all the time, yep. singing R and B songs. Okay, so for someone like myself who hasn't <clears throat> played the Pandora's Music Box yet, what what's the vibe like on that project? Is um definitely something inspired by like the the weekend okay for sure because that was wow. like around the same time that like key came out so it's just like all R and B like dark vibes um were you painting your fingernails black at that time no 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 I wrong just no no uh I don't know like I have to like think about this because like I don't I was in a different place back then you know like people grow right so but. All I can say is like it was just like a dark, like ambient, kind of like Drakeish OVO, um, the weekend kind of vibe. You basically. can hear Drake in your music. Yeah, yeah. No, no rapping on that though. Okay, none. None. No, okay. it's all singing. So Urban Legend is totally different from that. Then I'm assuming that was kind of like a response to it. Because okay. Because I kind of felt like I put out this R&B album, and people must have forgot that I rap. So I was like, all right, I got to show these people again and remind them. Let them know. So yeah, and so that's what I intended to do. It was like a big, um. I'm tired of being quiet. Album. That's what right. Urban Legend was to me. Okay. So. Yeah. Well, you you let them know. Um. I I obviously one of my favorite records is is the fucking with me now. Yeah. Yeah. It's my joint right there. Uh. Who is this? Love hundred dollar bills though. Um. Okay. 
So yeah, you got you've got some joints on there. Exactly. I have to ask, what made you go with the title Urban Legend? Because I take when I when I first hear <clears throat> Urban Legend, I think about Ti's third album. That's the first thing that comes to mind. So what made you go with that title? Um, for me, I think the primary reason was just um, you know, kind of kind of like this whole idea of like proving myself, and I feel like me, Elmer Bapo, the musician, the rapper, or whatever. Maybe like some people hadn't taken me seriously at the time, so okay. like. You think like my music is kind of like an urban legend to you? Okay. But, yeah, it was just a play on words, just okay. like a shot in the face. Like, well, this is what you think, but it's not really like that, you know. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, not mad at it. Everything, everything's pretty deep with me. I, I see. <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying. I'm trying to dive in. I'm, I'm you know, I'm, I'm gonna have to watch this back and really and really uh, really pull the gems from it. Yeah. Um, so you're working on your next project. Yes. And and are those two are Pandora's Music Box and Urban Legend are they mixtapes are they EPs are they albums what are they I consider them albums I don't really know what the distinction is between them like I, I like I'll say like a mixtape if you're gonna call something a mixtape it probably really is like a mix of different things right. I feel like when you have an album it will have a direction to it okay that's what kind of defines it in my some terms. type of like guiding fat like a script almost right right okay I say okay, you're right it is tough like I mean mixtapes and in 2000 or early to when 50 Cent started out or whatever, Lil Wayne, they were legit mixtapes. Artists were rapping on other artist beats or whatever. It's a, right. it a mix of all type of stuff. Whereas I know we, we still use the phrase, but Urban Legend is a, is a project full of original content that you put together. So it's essentially right. like an album. Um, yeah, right. But I hear a lot of people say that they, their album, their first album will be when they are on and that's like their initial. Mm -hmm. Like Dave East, he's been releasing mixtapes for how long he's finally signed got a momentum and he's still releasing mixtapes he's like i'm not releasing an album yet which i think is smart though like you want that debut album to just like smack right everybody in the face um so you're working on the next project you have a title for it yet i have a tentative title okay right now like i've been going through a lot of different things but right now i think the title is gonna be good intentions okay Ooh. okay yeah and uh it's just you know every every everything about my music is Pretty much like where I'm at in right. life. Um, I don't know if I talked to you about this before in like the previous interview, but I mean, like I'm very big on you know that words are not just words. That the things you really say do have like real implications, physical, spiritual, like manifesting things in your life. Yes. And so I guess like the point or the direction that I'm kind of taking this album is uh, just be really careful. With the things you say and really mean the things you say because it's it's not a joke. Facts. Uh, that's pretty much it. If you, if you put something negative out there, it, it could <clears throat> in, engulf you in negativity. Right. Like no, I, I like I like that a lot. Um. And do we have a tentative date or tentative time of year? Twenty eighteen. I'd like to. I mean, I know I put out. I, I said like it'll be then like October, November, December, but that didn't work out. Everything takes longer than you think it's gonna take. And it potentially could be done by the end of this year, but I don't think it's a good idea to release it because um, Christmas time I'm going to be in the Philippines for like okay. two weeks, You're so Filipino, I won't right? have any. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. So I won't have any time to promote it or anything. So it might right. just be sometime next year. Okay. I well, either way, we, we'll, be, we'll definitely be on the lookout for it. Oh, cool. Um, you had a recent performance at Sunset Park. Yes. Right. What was what was the entire event? What was that? There was like it was like a food festival or something. Yeah, like that, it was or? a food festival, micro brew festival, and like all a bunch of. Food trucks okay. around, and it was it was really cool. A uh, really nice family fun event. I was doing my covers and stuff, right? Because like some of my hip hop stuff is just too explicit. Fucking with and, me now. Yeah, the, <laughs> they, they won't pay, they won't pay me for that. At least like that kind of thing. Right. Yeah, you, so. yeah, you gotta have yeah music for all for all right events. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I I had saw that you were performing there, um, and my fiance Janelle she ended up going to it. I didn't realize that she was going. I, I didn't realize she went to the same thing you went to. You know, sometimes you just one of those weekends. You know, what? I mean, so you get the same time for artists, but you're always going. Um, I was the one who was. Doing, I just wanted. I just wanted to hang out in the house. I wanted to relax. I'm like, right. okay, I work all week. Let me just my weekend off. Let me just chill. So I didn't go with her to to the festival. And then uh, then she gets back, and I see like the pictures that she posted. Ever, I'm like, it's the same thing that Elmer was at. Damn, I should have went. I'd have been conquering two birds with one stone. I could have, I could have, could have appeased the fiance in this side. Right. I could have seen Elmer perform. I'm like, and then I'm like, okay, well, it's well, it's all good. Like, I'm always performing. I'm always trying to perform. So I'm sure you'll see me like some other time. Oh, well, I don't I, hold anything against anybody to like come to any of my performances because like I just feel like your time is not something that's owed to me. That's a gift you're giving me. So I can't like request that. Goes from both you. ways, right? Um, no, I I want to get out to see an Elmer Abapa performance. Okay, uh, for sure, I would love to see one. 
uh, at this stage in your career, and I would love to see one ten years from now when you're getting paid millions of dollars. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know, I would like to see the growth as uh, as been a common theme throughout this conversation. Yeah. Um. So I look forward to that. Um. Anything else that you would leave Vegas with? Um. Do I mean, and not just Vegas, but your fans, your audience, anybody <clears throat> that's new to Elmer Abapo, what would you leave them with? And real quick, who's on your shirt? I'm sorry. Uh, this. Yeah. I don't know what so, this is. Some, I got this shirt from Forever Twenty One. Okay. I think it's like some like Christopher Columbus thing okay. in the textbook, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and they put it on his shirt. I have no idea. Okay, but I thought it was a cool. Story. No, I rock with it. I rock with it. But um, Elmer Abapo. Who is Elmer Abapo? What's he? What's his legacy? What's he? Uh, what's he giving you? Music <clears throat> side, life side. What's he providing you? I think um, what I'm trying to represent is definitely just about being yourself and. What I'm trying to prove with my legacy and my life that I'm doing and like jumping into this music thing is like you really can do what you want to do. Um, you can be happy doing what you want to do. Like you don't have to settle for whatever it is. And I'm very, very careful with that because like I'm not trying to like preach that because I'm still in the position where I'm still proving it to myself. But I just want to let you guys know that like I'm jumping into it. And as like on a small scale, I've kind of like seen it work, you know, um, that's how yeah, like just just manifesting things like really really works but even it's still tough for me to believe it too it, it's because like i'm constantly like proving it to myself and it's just like i'm just like is this really working on the days when i have like you know like 25 dollars in my bank account i'm just like right. yo right what am like, i gonna do am, am i doing the right thing here right right facts i no, i think what you hit though is you manifest it then you go put the work in and then you see it happen. Like, so like when you say prove it to yourself, I think that's the beauty of it when you do prove it to yourself, whether it's in a small way or a big way, like you saw the, like the most minute thing happen, like, oh shit, I'm really doing it. Like, okay, this is dope. Right. Um, and then you might go through a week and nothing's happening, but that week that you're still working, nothing's happening. That's just building up for that next two weeks and something just smacks you in the face. Like, yeah, you're here. Yeah. Like that, that, that's how it always happens. I think, um, oh, one thing I do absolutely want to leave people with is, uh, what I've definitely learned is to just hold yourself accountable and um, just audit yourself, I guess. That's something I do almost like every single week. So I write down what I'm trying to do for the week. And uh, I'll write down the things that have been contributing to my success. And I write down the things that have been detracting from my success. Okay. And what I try to do, I'm not successful at it all the time, but I'm trying to make the list of things that are contributing to my success bigger and the things that are detracting from my success, I try and cut those things out and replace them with, um, you know, habits that'll help me in the long run. It's very tough, like holding yourself accountable. Like one of my things is like, stop using social media recreationally so much. I've had that on my things detracting from my success <laughs> list for like, I don't know, probably like two months already. It's such a tough thing to kick, but at least like I'm auditing myself like every time and I'm like working towards like fixing that. So. Thanks. It sounds like so my fiance she goes like these leadership conferences and, and we've gone back and forth of them. I have my views or I just stuff is common sense and she's like, Well no, you just don't understand it. Um, so I gotta open myself up to understanding more. But what you just said as far as auditing yourself and write out what's contributing to your success, that sounds like something that she mentioned to me. So that's the that's her word smacking me right in the face there. Yeah, so I appreciate yeah, yeah. that. Um yeah, I'm sure I'm sure she'll uh, she'll enjoy that. Uh, what I like about it, and, and just wrapping things up here, but you and uh, you and your girlfriend Nikki, I don't know how much you wanna bring her into the but like I think it's dope. She takes pictures. Um, a lot of a lot of your photos on Instagram. I see her tag. So this is dope to see other couples work together in that aspect in a bit in a very collaborative method and in, in, in supporting one another. Yeah, she's amazing. She's uh, my biggest fan. So I, I think that I think that's dope. I think it goes both ways. You can see it. Um, who the hell is your barber? Because your shit is fresh. Oh, I just got my barber. I just got my cut today. Um, his name's Anthony. He's he's really Part good. Away? I'm talking shit. Sorry. Oh, uh, I don't. I'm sorry. I don't know who that NBA is. player. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I got you. But Anthony, okay. Yeah, yeah, Anthony. Like, oh man, what's his Instagram? I gotta plug him. Be it's like his name's Anthony. Oh, okay. Like I was I was saying his Instagram handle, but I think it's like A N F E R N Y Y Y. Okay. But he's he's amazing. He's like a he's a coming up barber. He's about to go to school and okay. whatnot. But like. He does an amazing job. I, I, so. I can tell. Shit yeah. is crispy. Um, <laughs> so so on the way out, where can they follow you at, man? Uh, just follow me. Like, I have multiple places. Uh, my website, first and foremost, elmerobapo.com. Um, and do you update that yourself? Uh, yeah, I try to. I'm Man, like, you know, just multitasking. It's very hard to, like, update everything all at once. Well, I but... see your performances up there. I'm like, okay, he, ha he has to do this himself. I'm pretty sure. Like, Yeah, yeah. 
So yeah, I, I do I do that. Um, my Instagram is Elmer Dadabapo. I really, really wish I could get in contact with Instagram and just <laughs> yeah. change it to Elmer yes. Bapo because that person doesn't exist, but they keep saying that it exists, <sighs> but he doesn't exist. Can you change the Twitter to Elmer Dadabapo, or do you I, not? I don't want to do that. I want to keep everything clean. I You're like right. like that's that's, that's no a part no of me hyphens, too. no underscores, no, no, none of that. Like. So I guess like once I get bigger, like they'll figure it out and I can contact them. <laughs> yes. They're not listening to me right now. So, but uh, anywhere you type in Elmer Bapo, it's there. iTunes, Spotify. I'm pretty much the only Elmer Bapo in Las Vegas. The only Never other one is my dad. Okay. But he doesn't have any social media. <laughs> You're good. You're good on that so front. On me, yeah. Okay. And Nikki, are you taking pictures for anybody else or just Elmer? Just, just the man's? For now, it's just him. Okay. Right. Okay. It, it's, it's not a, it's not a hobby it's not a passion anymore it's like yeah takes the fun out of it i get it well if you uh, if you do need some pictures she's on uh she's on elmer's instagram um no i just, I just want to put everything out there you, right, you right, do right. your you will do a mighty fine job behind the lens so i want to make a great job yeah. i want to make sure it's uh make sure it's out there um this has been a long time coming i appreciate your convo i appreciate you uh your time yeah, yeah. um we're not wasting any time we're going full uh Full, full force ahead. Um, I think you've got a, a a very big bag of success waiting on you. Several bags of success waiting on you. I appreciate that. I um, appreciate you speaking that into existence for me. Got to, <laughs> so, got to. Because sometimes, like, it's very hard to believe for myself. But I just, I just got to trust the process. You've got a stupid amount of talent, Elmer. Stupid Thanks, amount man. of talent. So when you get to sway, if you can just say. This dude named AD back in Vegas interviewed me. Um, I need you to make sure you step your game up when you talk to me, Sway. That'd be really dope. <laughs> just some shit. That'd, that'd, be, that'd be really dope. Um, okay, okay. Just don't, just don't knock them talking <laughs> shit. Elmore Abapo, Vegas' number one hit music station, 98.5 KLU. Oh,